All right, this video we're going to talk about velocity and how that relates to um, tangent lines and rates of change. So um, first we want to talk about the, the difference between average velocity and instantaneous velocity. So an average velocity is essentially taking a, a distance traveled over time and then dividing by that time that it took it to go that distance. So you know if you travel 100 miles and um, it took you, you know, how, however, however long that took you to do it, you take the 100 miles divided by that time, and that is your average velocity for that trip. Well, um, in uh, instantaneous velocity, you're looking at a, a speed or a velocity at one instance in time. So, um, for example, uh, when you're driving your car, your speedometer is going to tell you something like 60 miles per hour. That's giving you an instantaneous velocity. It's saying at that single moment, your car is traveling 60 miles per hour. It's not taking a distance and dividing by a time. It doesn't have time to do that. It is saying right now we're going 60 miles per hour. Um, now, if you think about this again, velocity is a rate. It's a rate of change. So what we're thinking is in order to find a rate of change or a slope, we need two points right so we need to take a, a total distance traveled our starting point to our final point and we need to divide by that time that it takes us to do that um, so how does our car do that at one instance okay and uh, we're going to look at, at an example here um, where we're going to try to figure that out um, where we can just say okay i know that the instantaneous velocity at this specific time is going to be this so uh, we have a ball being thrown into the air. Uh, the initial velocity is 40 feet per second. And then we have a function that gives its height t seconds later. So y would be the height is equal to 40t minus 16t squared. We want to find the average velocity of this ball um, for the time period beginning at 2 seconds and then lasting for these lengths of time. Okay. So first of all, just a quick setup, what does this mean? Well, all of these time periods are beginning at two. So I'm gonna draw kind of like the interval here. This would, would indicate the time from two to 2.5. This would indicate the time from two to 2.1. This would be from two to 2.05. And this would be from 2 to 2.01. So what I want you to realize here is what we are doing is we're taking that that one specific time, two seconds, and then we're picking a second point and we are shrinking that time interval down. So at first we're looking at a time interval of a half a second, but then we're going to look at a tenth of a second and then we're going to keep on shrinking that time interval down so that we can figure out, we can estimate based on these answers, what the instantaneous rate of change or the instantaneous velocity is going to be at two seconds. So we're going to try to figure out how uh, fast is the ball traveling at two seconds by shrinking this interval down and, and looking at these average velocities. So again, I'm going to use Desmos to help me out here a little bit. What we're going to do every time is we're going to find slopes. Okay, and every single time one of our points is going to be when x is 2. So we're going to always be looking at when x is 2, what is y? So I have already graphed this equation, y equals 40x minus 16x squared. I'm going to pull up a table here. And when x is 2, the y is 16. So what I know is every single time... Um, essentially what we have going on is we have um, f of our second x which is 2.5 minus 16 that is that is our y value when we plug in uh, 2 and then on the bottom 2.5 minus 2 and then here we have like f of 2.1 whatever the y value is when we plug in 2.1 minus 16 over 2.1 minus uh, two and so forth and we're gonna get these answers okay so again this is going to require me to go through and plug in 
um, that second x value every time into my function 40t minus 16t squared to get those y values so that we can find slope. I'm going to do this all at once using Desmos. So again, what I'm going to do is on top, we're going to have the function, which is going to be 40x minus 16x squared. Um, and then minus, so that's going to be like, that's my, that's my function for no matter what x I plug in, I'm doing that minus 16. Every time on top, it's going to be minus the y value at 2, which is going to be minus 16. So again, I'm plugging in the slope formula here, but that's the top. And then we're going to divide by whatever x we're plugging in minus 2. And uh, again, I'm going to pull up a table here. And so the first, um, the first one we wanted to plug in was 2.5. So if we plug in 2.5, um, what I just found by plugging that in is if I plug in 2.5, this whole formula is going to give me negative 32. Okay, well, if I plug in 2.1, I get negative 25.6. Okay, well, 2.05. So again, this is f of... 2.05 minus 16 over 2.05 minus 2. And again, this would be f of 2.01 minus 16 over 2.01 minus 2. But again, same thing. So I'm just going to change my 2.1 to 2.05. I get negative 24.8. And then... Uh, 2.01, I get negative 24.16. And then the second, so that's, that's what it's, that we're finding. So like the average velocity of the ball. The average velocity of the ball from time 2 to time 2.5. So over that half a second between time 2 and time 2.5, the ball was traveling at negative 32 uh, feet per second. Now what does the negative mean? The negative just means that the ball is either falling down or if you think left to right, I know that's not what we're talking about here, but that would be moving left. So moving in the negative direction in this case is meaning moving down. So the ball is falling at a rate of 32 feet per second. Um, if we shrink that and we just look at the, the time interval from 2 to 2.1, the average velocity of the ball there was was 20, uh, 25.6 feet per second uh, moving downward. Um, and then anyway, as, as that interval keeps shrinking, okay, we get to the smallest interval where we're just looking at the, the average velocity between the time 2 and 2.01 seconds. The average velocity of the ball there is negative 24.16. So if you looked at these answers, and as we keep shrinking that time interval down, you should see a pattern with those answers in terms of what are they approaching. So we go from negative 32 to negative 25.6 to negative 24.8 to negative 24.16. If you wanted to, you could do this again and shrink this interval even more. So type in something like 2.001 or 0001. And notice if I keep adding zeros here, um, this number is getting closer and closer and closer to what? And that's going to be my answer to part B. Estimate the instantaneous velocity of the ball at two seconds. And based on what my answers are trending towards, I can answer that as negative 24 feet per second.